Step of three in 3.2 is using, I'm going to read, write a quadratic function to model a situation. And these can be tricky for students because, again, it's a, a usually it's not a lot of text here, but usually there's some description that we have to basically figure out how to model mathematically. So it says that a rancher has 100 meters of fencing available to build a rectangular corral. So nice right angles. I'm just going to draw. I mean, it'll look roughly squarish, but that's okay. Uh, and we know, and this is important, that because we have 100 meters of fencing, the perimeter of that fence is equal to 100, and I'll put the meters there. All right, well, if we're going to identify that this is a rectangular corral, then logically we have, you know, length and width. Um, I, I, you could use any variable, any letter you want, but because I'm a math teacher and I lack imagination, I tend to use X and Y as much as possible. So I'm going to label the length of this as X, which means that this is X as well, and I'm going to label the width or the height, whatever you want to call it, as Y. Now, what that means is I can come up with an equation for the perimeter here, which is going to be 2x plus 2y. But we know that the perimeter is 100. So 100 is equal to 2x plus 2y. And that's going to be a really important equation in a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> the next part of this question, it says, write a quadratic function in standard form to represent the area of the corral. Well, perimeter is the addition of all the sides, but area is going to be whatever x is times whatever y is. Now, there's a problem here that if I leave that as area is equal to x times y, I can't graph that, at least not two-dimensionally. Because we have three variables, we would need a, you know, a three-dimensional graph, which is a bit of a stretch. So what I have to do is get either x in terms of y or y in terms of x. It does not matter. Um, because we're going to use our graphing calculator, I'm going to get y in terms of x. So I'm going to take this equation, divide everything by 2. And if 50 is equal to x plus y, then y is equal to 50 minus x. Now, it is important that because x and y are physical dimensions, x must be greater than or equal to 0, and y must be greater than or equal to 0. But this equation introduces another restriction. If y is equal to 50 minus x, then x must also be less than or equal to 50, and y must be less than or equal to 50. And the logic behind that is if I make both of those x's 50, I, can't, I don't have any more fencing to enclose an area. So there's a pretty solid argument here that because we're actually trying to enclose an area, I should put, you know, X is less than 50 and greater than zero, not less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. That doesn't matter so much, but it is important that that's going to allow us to, to limit what we're looking at on our graph. Because when we graph this quadratic, I don't have to look more than 50 on my X axis or more than 50 on my Y axis. And I only have to look in quadrant one because X and Y are physical dimensions. But what we're going to do next is really important. And I'm going to write this in a particular way that because I am taking my blue box equation and substituting it in, what I'm really writing now is the area of this corral as a function of whatever we make X. And function notation is very useful just for that reason. It tells me exactly what I'm using to calculate the area of this. And that would be equal to the X variable that's still there, but instead of Y, I'm going to put in 50 minus x. Now, it does want a quadratic, so I'm going to clean this up just a little bit, and I'm going to write it as negative x squared plus 50x, and that's just distributing that x onto both. So that's our quadratic um, in terms of x. So it's going to give me the area. If I want to make, I don't know, let's say I make x 10, I can plug 10 into that equation and find out the area of the corral it would give me. If I made x 10, I could use my blue boxed equation to find out what size y would be. All right, um, so B says, what are the coordinates of the vertex and what does the vertex represent in this situation? Now, before we find the coordinates of the vertex, I wanna do C. We're gonna graph the function first. So in order to graph this function, we need our graphing calculator. We're gonna go to that and we need to type the function in for Y1. Well, my function was negative X squared plus 50 X. And then really importantly, we're going to tweak our window settings. It's not the frog anymore. I am going to keep negative one for X min and Y min just so we can see where those axes are. But X max, remember that it can't be larger than 50. So 50 is fine. Y max can't be larger than 50 as well. Now, what's a little bit frustrating about this, and I just made that mistake, is that on our calculator, Y isn't representing the dimensions of the corral. It's representing the area of the corral. So I'm going to tack on a zero there. I'm going to say it's 500. Right now, again, I don't know if that's a good Y max, which is why we use our calculator and it's not a good Y max. We don't actually see where that vertex is. So I'm going to add, oh, let's make it 800. That's a guess. And I really want you to understand that I do not have some mystical knowledge to find these window settings. Please be willing to graph 
and then tweak your window settings and graph again, right? That is part of this, you know, chunk of the course is being willing to look at it maybe more than once. In order to find that vertex, it is a maximum. So I'm going to do second trace option number four, which is maximum. The left bound, that's good there. That's the left of it. The right bound, again, just moving to the right. That's fine. And then when I hit enter, it tells me my maximum is at 25.000001, comma 625. Now, this does happen quite a bit on the calculators. That 0 .00001 is just a rounding error. So we are going to say that that maximum is at 25. I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're going to put it right into the notes here. So what we're going to be able to say, and I guess this is, oh, I forgot the letter already. Awesome. This is B. My vertex is at the coordinate 25 comma 625. And this means that the area is equal to 625 square meters when the X dimension is 25 meters. Now, because we have this blue formula, and I'm kind of, I guess I'm boxing in black now. Um, if X is equal to 25, then the other dimension is 25. So I'm actually going to put the corral would be 25 meters by 25 meters. And you will find that when we're looking to find maximum areas, you will get squares almost every time, unless there's some kind of a, a little tweak they make to the question. All right, um, so that's B and C. Uh, it wants us then for D to determine the domain and range for the situation. And then E is to identify any assumptions you made in modeling the situation. So I would argue that you could not make a corral. So when we talk about the domain and range, I'm going to say that X can be greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to 50 and is a real number. Now, here's the problem. I don't want to put Y there because I've already used it for the dimension. So I'm going to say that the area, because it's really important that this graph is area as a function of x. Very important to identify what you're actually graphing because otherwise you can get a little confused with what your variables are representing. So the area has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Area can't be negative, but it's going to be less than or equal to that maximum area, which is 625 square meters, but area is continuous, so it can be any real number in between those values. All right, last little bit here. Sorry about the scrolling. It says E, identify any assumptions. Uh, I mean, there's plenty. There's the assumption that there's, you know, the ground is perfectly level uh, because we can go 25 meters without needing extra if it was slanted up. Um, we're also assuming that we can break the fence apart into any dimension imaginable. You know, some fences might come in two meter chunks or three meter chunks and we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing here. Um, another assumption that, you know, we pretty typically make is that there's no overlap in the fence. And again, I haven't built a ton of fences. I've built a couple. And if you're doing a barbed wire fence, the amount of barbed wire, you got to wrap that around the pool, at least, you know, at the beginning and the end. So there are a few assumptions. And I always encourage students to think of this type of modeling questions as kind of the best case scenario. Uh, and then sometimes reality, you know, does a little bit. Uh, sodding lawns, right? You can, you can measure and you can measure exactly all you want, but typically you should add 10% to make sure that you don't run out of sod, uh, you know, almost through the project. All right, uh, I'm going to put the, the full assignment up here. Um, check Google Classroom. It is very likely modified. And good luck. Chip away at it. And make sure you have your calculator or, you know, an emulator online when you're doing these because it is expected at this point that, that you're getting comfortable with the graphing calculator. And we're going to continue to build on that comfort throughout the Dash 1 stream.